What's up guys, this is Shell Shop from CTUSA Mini 4 Wheel Drive Racing Squad and I'm a teacher here in New Works and today we're going to talk about Super X Chassis but before I start I want to say shout out to Mark Cebu from Kabide Shout out Mark Cebu, Idol, he's a good uh, tire trimmer um, If you need some uh, tire trimming jobs I would recommend Mark Cebu, you can find him on Facebook He's also a mutual friend of mine and also a mutual friend of Sir Joey so Hit us up or hit him up for tire trimming in the Philippines. Also, I want to say shout out to JHD, Jeff Yeah, Mini 4 Wheel Drive. He have all your copy parts. And original to me and needs, he's from Taiwan. But he have an eBay account and he can ship internationally. Also, shout out to DY King. He's also a Mini 4 Wheel Drive seller in the Philippines. Copy parts and original parts. Mini 4 Wheel Drive needs. You can also hit up DY King. Um, I don't know where he's located, but he have a Facebook account. You can message him. And you're going to get all the details. And before I go, I want to say shout out to Roscoe. I will put his name right here in his channel. Roscoe, Doc Roscoe from Indonesia. He has all the tutorials and also some tips, a little tricks about mini four-wheel drive. Um, you can message Roscoe or you can watch his Roscoe channel. I'm going to write it down over here. Roscoe channel, just type it on uh, in YouTube. It's Roscoe channel. And um, he will have tutorials and tips for you. And now, all right. All right, guys, I want you guys to imagine this. It's 1997. Everybody want to race mini four-wheel drive. Your cousin, your dad, your uncle, and even your high school crush or your crush from elementary is racing mini four-wheel drive. So um, you you have a lot of chassis to choose from. It's a Zero Chassis, TZ, FM Chassis, Super FM Chassis, Super One. You have five chassis on the books for Jacob. Jacob 1995 and Jacob 1996 is already on the books. We're ready for a new year. It's 1997. Tamiya decided to release Super X Chassis. All right. Su Super X Chassis is one of my favorite. I'm so excited to go through this because this is one of the chassis that I really, really like and really got me into mini four-wheel drive. I'm not going to lie. This is like when I was a kid, I was like, I want that. When it first, it, when Sh when Shadow Breaker specifically was released, I was like, I want that. So it's more of a, it's more aerodynamic, and um, everybody is like so amazed the way it's like so aerodynamic. It's flashy. The the body shells of the Super X chassis is all flashies, and um, people are looking for more rigid, more durable chassis. So to me, uh, like listen to their needs and they innovate innovate this brand new chassis with with very very unique uh, characteristics compared to other chassis that were released prior to this one so i hope you like this video i'm gonna go all in depth talk about history technical stats and um yeah i uh, hope you like it and we're gonna start right now super x chassis all right here we go the super x chassis is a mini four-wheel drive chassis released in december 1997 on um, the first um mini four-wheel drive released with a Super X chassis is a max breaker. Um, the Super X chassis is rigid, wide, multi subframe chassis frame. It has the wheelbase of 84 millimeters and the tread of seven, 70 millimeters when equipped with a large diameter narrow wheels, which makes the chassis more stable on cornering and jumping as well as it cr increase on the straight speed and expands the cornering speed. Unlike previously chassis, the propeller shaft is and the orange crown gear is placed transversely to the reverse layout and then the use of the 1.4 millimeter wide propeller shaft instead of 2.0 millimeter one its first mini four-wheel drive chassis to employ 72 millimeter drive shafts the motor can be removed in the under chassis removing the more motor from the under panel allowing a simple motor swapping and an additional for a center of hard point which is two additional screw holes on the rear and will also use to attach for a roller stays. And all the Super X chassis machines were equipped with specifically designed wheels. The wheels are specifically designed only for Super X chassis on that era back in 1997. And then later on, the same wheel that are specifically designed for Super X chassis is can be used with Super XX chassis in the future. But way back in 1997, you can't use um those um other wheels with other uh with other chassis so that's pretty much it with a with a quick summary with a super x chassis and uh we're all gonna go to the stats now. all right so now uh, an every review i have is um 
I have all the stats. So first on our uh, list is the toughness, which is 3.9, which is high because the, the other chassis are lower than that. The toughness of this chassis is really good because the chassis is rigid and wide. So um, the, the toughness of this chassis is 3.9, which is very high for my opinion. Uh, acceleration is 3.9, which is like slightly slower than the other chassis, but not too, too fast, but it's 3.9, which is, um, I mean, raceable. Um, this is actually all the stats straight from the box, but the acceleration is 3.9, which is, I think for me is like in a, in a moderate speed. Um, cornering is in a low 2.9. As I've said earlier, the, the Super X chassis is wide. So, um, because it's wide, it's, it's more stable when it goes to corners, but you have to, um, realize that the, as the car goes wider, the car gets slower in cornering. That's why the cornering is 2.9. Again, this stats is all straight from the back, from the box. And when you modify your car for the specific category that you want to use this chassis and, um, that, that will be the way to compensate and to overcome all these weaknesses. So what I, what I see is like the, one of the biggest weakness of this chassis is cornering. Okay. Um, the next on our list is stability, which is high 4.8. So as I've said, when, as the chassis goes wider, um, th the stability and the cornering is the one that you're going to pick, um, um, which one you're going to focus on. In this case, stability is 4.8, which is very, very high straight from the box, which is means this car is going to be stable with a box stock motor and the chassis is stable to begin with. Um, the adaptability is 3.8, um, which is, I understand why it's only 3.8 because you got to remember this is 9097 and this chassis is one of the, one of, one of the oldest chassis too. So this chassis is one of the is is the first chassis with a th with two extra holes at the rear part where, where we put all our mounting points. So there's one on the bottom and there's one on the rear end. Which nowadays we put three point attachments to make the car more um uh, more tough. And uh, as we upgrade the car. Um, those two extra holes are very, very important to make the car more sturdier. All right. And last but not the least is maintenance. It's 3.8 because, um, it's easier because you pop the, you pop the motor from the bottom. Um, and then you pop the, the gears by clicking it underneath. I will show you earlier. And, um, I think it's easy to clean. Um, it's 3.8. If I would stat this, this is coming from all from to me. I will put a little bit higher. On the maintenance part because the car is easy to clean um easy to put grease on easy to put motor so that would be for me that would be a four but to, four or 4.5 but to me i put 3.8 in there so again let's, let's go back toughness is 3.9 acceleration is 3.9 cornering is slow 2.9 stability is high 4.8 adaptability is 3.8 um, and maintenance is 3.8. And now we're going to go in depth to the chassis. I will show you all the, like, um, how to assemble it. I will show all, all the parts and uh, all the holes and, uh, all the inner stats about it in few seconds. All right. Here we go. Super X chassis. Um, um, before I begin, um, actually, I want to show you this Super X chassis. This is a carbon Super X chassis, which is a hop up part, but this will do the job. Um, the length of the Super X chassis from here, from this, this is like the farthest, the tip. From here, when with the optional rear stay, which is have an extra hole now, it goes like this. From here to here, is 156 millimeters. So that's quite long from a traditional chassis compared to the other traditional chassis. And that's explain one of the factors why this chassis is a little bit slower in cornering, but stable. All right. The width from this, the width of this chassis. So the widest part of this chassis is this to this in general is 92 millimeters which is wide actually wide for other chassis that's why 
it is um stable all right as we go on you will guys notice why is the reason why it's stable it's it's focused more on stability all right so um the the ground clearance from this chassis is 52.2 millimeters with a large diameter wheel which is um uh, i don't know if i have a large diameter wheel right now for super x but if you have a super x large diameter wheel which is i think the three the three spoke is a uh, the three spoke is a um, 5.2 millimeter with large diameter wheels so if you actually have a large diameter wheels for this chassis the ground the ground clearance is 52 which is high for a large diameter okay when you're using a small diameter which is the x type wheel it's actually specifically for x i think i have one for my modified one which is like this see this one or this type see this is from a phantom blade and this one is a it's called the x type um it is two millimeters above the ground um two millimeters above the ground is from the underneath of this chassis to the ground with wheels so that's that's low for for a for a chassis back in 97 because the lower the lowest chassis to the ground was the tz and this one is with a small diameter it's two right from the box the drive shaft is very interesting because this is the first chassis actually this is the first chassis who have a 70 millimeter dri drive shaft a drive shaft is this this is called the drive shaft some people call it wheel shaft so you can only use 72s with this chassis because if you're gonna use the other drive shafts yeah uh, the 60s the it will be like short and then your wheels will keep on falling off so again this stats is straight from the box so i'm telling you all this stats so you will know all the stats of this chassis and how will you compensate this chassis when you're trying to use it for a specific category that you want uh let's say pro stock or super stock the cornering for this car is already good so you need to make it faster or make it like um well i should say like a faster in cornering or you know a little bit narrower like put narrow wheels to it all right as we all right we're, so continue the compatible gears for this car is just interestingly like you can um this is also one of the first chassis that you can equip three five one gear without a hop up part because a zero chassis a tz chassis um a super one chassis fm chassis and a super fm chassis you have to have that gear cover an upgrade gear cover to make it to make this 351 fit all right it's 351 the, the the blue and the yellow um combination gear ratio because 351 this one is big so it actually you can fit every gear ratio from 51 421 441 371 or um 351 okay the roller down thrust is very very interesting because it's high for my opinion is 6.5 degrees all right there you go if you'll take a look at it for those stock racers the degree of this chassis is very important as you can see this degree right here is 6.5 if it can focus focus there you go all right see that that's 6.5 right there so actually this can be competitive when you if you're using for pro stock box stock or a super stock um the terminal type is x type which you can uh, share this is uh the x type terminal and i have this there you go i have one new right here um x type is is you can actually use for vs chassis which is another video because there's no vs chassis review yet um and uh super x and the new the latest um chassis fma um you can use those three you can use this terminal with those three chassis but now it's a it's a type x chassis i mean terminal type right here which shares with the vs chassis all right with batteries with batteries with the regular batteries uh it's 112 grams which is heavy 
without batteries at 69 grams, which is really, really heavy compared to other chassis. But again, this is 1997. This is straight out from the box. The other chassis that like this, this is a carbon one. And um, the fluorescent chassis, like, um, and the white chassis, which I have, I have this on my modified one. This is a white chassis. Um, it is lighter. But the older, cha the older chassis, the one with the original, is a... Uh, is heavier is heavier um one thing with super x chassis it's also part of the aero series aero series is a it's a it's a combination with vs chassis and a super x chassis and also uh, on the mighty series which is the mighty series you have the cross tiger and um aero is like max breaker shadow breaker knuckle breakers all those breakers um i don't know all of them but those are the main first um, kits that with the Super X chassis, which I like because they're all aerodynamically and they're all flashy, in my opinion. So, um, we're going to go further. All right. So, to build this, this is very, very unique because the chassis is wide. And that's how it explains how it's good in cornering, as I have said earlier. Um... The drive shaft is 72 millimeters, so it's wider. The optional, um, the stock wheels are wide too. As you can see, it's wide. They're all wide if, if you have a breaker. And if you have a knuckle breaker, which is a different kit, you can have this kind of um, wheels up front, which is narrower. So that's explained how, that's why the car is um, stable, okay? So it's basically when it's it corners and it weaves through the track, there's more grip because it's wider. The, the wheels are wider and the chassis is wider to begin with. All right. So um, that's 72 millimeter drive shaft. You're going to insert it over there. Uh, one interesting about this chassis, which is very unique compared to other chassis, is the, the gears. All right. The gears that you can use is the orange gear. Um, I don't know what exactly it's called, but I can take a look what kind of gear it is. Just give me a second. Uh, if I find a manual. Um, the gears. It's called the G2 orange gear, okay? These two gears right here are the G2 orange gears, which you can use with Super FM chassis. And um, FMA chassis, Super X, and Super XX. Okay? But Super XX is later on will be the new age Super X chassis. But for now, we're talking about Super X chassis. Alright, Super X chassis is the first one who actually have the gears in the opposite side. Which is, you put it over here. Alright, opposite side were the motors and the crown the the counter gear and the dish gear were all right so those are your orange gears the your orange gears this is your propeller shaft okay this propeller shaft is very very interesting and very unique compared to other propeller shafts especially back in the days back in 1997 because this is the only propeller shaft that is thinner compared to other propeller shafts Okay, the the regular propeller shaft, which we use with the Super One, Super TZ, and um, FM. Actually, the FM is thicker. That's the thickest. But the others have 2.0. And this propeller shaft is, um, I think, um, 1.4. So this propeller shaft is 1.4. So if you can see, it is thinner compared to other propeller shaft. And it's longer. That's also one thing. This propeller shaft is longer compared to other chassis. The only chassis that shares the same propeller shaft is a later on chassis. But back in 1997, this is the only chassis that can use this propeller shaft. This propeller shaft, this propeller shaft can be used with Super XX chassis and the FMA chassis. But back in the days, 97 only 72 all right and now you're going to the counter gears this this yellow 
dish gear goes to the other side. See, a usual mini four-wheel drive will like, will share the same spot. Like the crown gears and the dish gear are together, usually on the left side with a propeller shaft there. But Super X is unique compared to other chassis. Um, it, This is the counter gear shaft right here. And you put it right on top. Com like if you take a look at this, is a different design. This is actually an innovation back in 97 because you put it on top like this. Because before, the Super X, I mean the Super 1s, Super TZ, and the FM have this gear catch where you put it all together. Um, and um, motor catch and you put it all together and it's not floating like here. It's like this is basically just to put it on top. All right. And then... When you put it on top, you have, um, where's the gear cover? All right. So, um, this is the gear cover. Close it like that. There you go. Easy, right? So it's just snap. And you have two snapping things over here that you just push. And it snap up. All right. So you're going to put it like this. You put it like that. You insert it with the holes. There's like holes over there. And then you snap it. Alright. So, if you can see the maintenance, when it comes to maintenance, it's very easy. It's very easy to do. Um, You just remove all, you snap all the stuff, and then you, you can clean the gears if there's like a lot of gunks or for, for, uh, because you put too much grease on it and stuff. Um, This is the cover. What you can snap to. It's also you can just snap and there's a hole two holes over there there you go and that's the terminal um the motor you put the motor here i don't know if i have an extra motor all right they have a stop motor here so i have a stop motor right here and it's very easy you snap it see that's a, back in 97, this is the first chassis who have this kind of like, uh, this kind of motor holder. There you go. And then there's the hole, put it over there. Here's the motor, co motor cover from the bottom. And then you snap it. And there you see, there you go. Like it's very, very user friendly. One thing that I like with this chassis back in the days when I was growing up, it's very user friendly. And this is the like the the battery holder. And then you snap it. It's very user friendly. When I was a kid, like my motor is burned, switch it up, put it up, change it up, put another motor, pinion gears, put it in there, snap, put the batteries, snap. You know, so. This is one thing that people doesn't know, like especially the kids or the racers that didn't know about the '90s. Back in the '90s, there's a, there's a <coughs> there's also a category called called relay, which is a kid will grab his car and then another kid will grab a like will grab another car or their dad to uh, to race. It's called relay. So the the they're swapping of motors. Is very very important back in the days where the, when it comes to the relay category that's why this is one thing that I think that the Mia was thinking because this is easy to change motors and to change batteries when you're just snapping like like that and the battery is more secure with this so that's the category back in the days which is called relay we don't have it nowadays anymore I don't know some racing centers still have it I think I know in New York we they do it they do it in New York I mean we do it in New York so that's what, I'm, what it's going to look like. Alright. The reason why I think there's a lack of acceleration and speed for this car. Because it's heavy. Number one, it's heavy. Because there's a lot of plastic in there. Number two, it's wide. So the corner when it comes to technical track. It's lower in the cornering but it's more stable. Number three, this chassis is long. That's also explained why it's stable. But... This chassis is also high. Like, the shape of this chassis is like a boat. Alright? And this is, I think, one weakness of this chassis when you're using it for a, for a speed tech on our J-Cup category. Because the shape of the chassis is like a boat. So it's either going to tilt like this 
or it's gonna tilt like that. That's one thing that Tamiya didn't think about this chassis. But again, there's no such thing as good or bad chassis. You just have to compensate its weakness. It depends on what category you're gonna use it. Well, when it comes to adaptability, they put a little work, so you have two extra holes over there. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So those are six holes in the bumper. There's no holes here yet. So you gotta drill holes over there if you wanna modify this. The, the sides, there's two side wings, which is, if it's carbon, it's durable, but if it's stock, it's kinda soft. But there's two holes over there. So back in the days, we put poles in there when we when we use it on the modify class. And what one thing that is very, one also is important, what Tamiya did back in 97, which is very groundbreaking, is the three-point attachment. I think that they realized that they need extra two holes over there so they can secure those mountain plates because it's not really that you know durable or like sturdy if you only have one hole in the back for your for your you know for your uh, mods so they did a very very good job especially if you think about it it's only 1997 there's like three you can put three attachments over there or you can put two like just here you have the option you also have the option so that's that's pretty much it for the super x chassis as i can see um if you have any suggestions or comments, please, please comment below. I'm open for uh, for all the suggestions, what else I need to know with the Super X chassis. But this is my favorite chassis back in the 90s. And I, and I think it's really it's still competitive today. So I uh, build one. Uh, I will feature this in my other videos. But this is a Super X chassis built. Um, I basically mod this. In some categories, it's not allowed to make new holes. But in, uh, in a J-Cup category, which is... They call it the international international category is um you can modify and make holes and you know make all those modifications for uh strength and the weakness of the chassis so i try to overcome as much as possible so uh this one is run by a sprint dash but that would be a different video so yeah so um this is super x chassis um Hope you like this video, and if you have more questions, as I've said, please comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and this is Shell Shock from CTSA Mini Four Wheel Drive Racing Squad. As I always say, we learn from you, you learn from us. Always race humble. Peace out.